Hey folks, good evening. Welcome to the Morse Summer 2020, 2020 Adventures Day 18. Okay, um, we are in the, well, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, hopefully you can hear me, we've got a couple of fans going on. Some of you have asked how we're doing as far as the heat. Uh, we are in a 31 foot Class C with one AC. I can assure you, it struggles. It's struggling right now. So the background of your noise that you hear are some fans that we've got going in addition to the air conditioning. Is it bearable? Yeah. Are we suffering? No. Okay. Could it be better? Oh, of course. Okay, but we're okay. Um, one of the things that we are gonna do when we get back is um, change the 1300 BTU or 13,000, whatever it is, 13 BTU that we have for 15 and we're also going to put one with that we'll probably put this one in the back and put the new one right here in the front we're going to go with two acs uh, i saw a thing on um, on one of the uh, groups that we belong to uh, it's called a soft start where you can run two acs on a 30 amp circuit so i wouldn't have to uh, do any rewire anything like that according to my uh, uh, rv guru back home shout out to you Steve Little. Anybody need some work there in the Eastern Carolina? Steve's a man. Hey, anyway, <laughs> back to where we are. All right, uh, we got here at 2.20 today. The reason I know that is because well, as I was filling the RV up when we got in town, I looked across the street and there on the billboard was, you know, uh, what, 7-13-2020 at 2.20 and it was 110 degrees. Okay, now at 7 o'clock, it is 100 all right yeah you heard me right 100 at seven o'clock in the evening all right the humidity right now is 17 percent and we have a northwest wind of 18. so it kind of feels a little better um than what it did before having said all that you know um it's hot in the southwest you know um but then again you know we we knew that uh my wife and I had lived here before. Uh, we were stationed in Yuma twice in my 22 years. Uh, my wife grew up in Arizona. So, uh, you know, we knew what to expect and we're not that far from Arizona state line. Um, like I said, we are in Hatch, New Mexico. And, you know, and I'll tell you a little bit about Hatch. Um, on Labor Day weekend, they have a huge chili festival. Um, being you know the green chilies which they grow here some of the license plates in new mexico says land of the enchantment land of the enchantment All right, and that's been their motto for years you know just like in carolina you know the license plates you know first in flight okay but they have other specialty plates and they read new mexico chili capital of the world well if chili if 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 New Mexico is the chili capital of the world, then Hatch is the supreme capital, chili capital of the world, because their lo their slogan is Hatch, the chili capital of the world, because this is where the green chilies are grown. Um, a lot of in the stores, uh, you buy green chili, um, and most of them will say, you know, Hatch, New Mexico. Imagine that. Uh, we did get our supply. We got the kids some. Uh, you know, they always want mom's, you know, chilies, mom chili, mom's chili. Well, this time we bought enough so she ain't got to share. Okay, so we got them some also. Um, but uh, our trip today, um, coming out of Roswell, uh, we were told to take 380, and that would go down through Bent and Alamogordo, and, and bring us over this way. And the reason I wanted to go through Bent was because that's where my mother-in-law was. The homestead where she was born is in or is around Bent, and so we want to get some pictures of Bent, so Chrissy could have some pictures, and you know we could show you know Dorothy that you know we've been through there and what it's been like since the last time she was here, because I'm sure the town has changed, you know. Um, but my informant was incorrect. All right, 380 took us to the north side of the White Sands Missile Range instead of the south side, which is where Bent is. But that's okay. I mean, I was disappointed I didn't get to go through Bent, but 
being a history teacher uh, and growing up out west, uh, I went through Lincoln County. I went right by the courthouse and you say, well, what's so important about that? Lincoln County and Sheriff Pat McGarrett and Billy the Kid, that's where, that's where all of that happened was in Lincoln County. The courthouse, Lincoln County Courthouse, is where Billy the Kid escaped from. All right, when he was on trial for killing Pat McGarrett, or Pat Garrett, you know, which was his friend, but he was a sheriff. Okay, so uh, you know, if you want a story, you know, just you know, being Pat, you know, uh, Pat uh, uh, Garrett and, and you know, Billy the Kid, and, and read the story. All right, so we came through that area. We also through, came through Captain, and Captain, I don't remember when it was. I think it was in '53. But I'm not exactly sure. You might have to bing that one also. You know, um, got a bug, dead bug on the road now. Um, anyway, that's where Smokey the Bear was found. All right, the real Smokey the Bear. And so we stopped and got a couple pictures of that. Uh, Christy took some pictures of the farmland and the agriculture going through the mountains between Roswell and here. And then, you know, as we got in closer to the hatch, uh, some pictures of the uh, Rio Grande. And, you know, it's 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 really eye-opening and a shock when you come over the mountain and around the bend, and all of a sudden you see emerald green in a vast plunder of brown, dead brown, not really dead, but you know, brown. And it's because the Rio Grande River was running through the valley there. And of course, my dad always said, "You bring water to the desert, you can grow anything." Well, folks, they are okay. Uh, around here, it's more pecans. You, know, you, you can buy pecans by the bag full, fresh pecans, you know, by the Ziploc bags, um, as well as the chilies and whatnot, which we did. Yes, yes, yes. All right. You know, so uh, a lot of pictures there. Um, you know, and today, uh, out of the five days that we have been in New Mexico, I probably had my best meal. That's not to say the other ones weren't good. I was impressed with the first one back in Tucumcari at the Powell restaurant. Um, and that was, you know, to get the taste buds going. Uh, places that we ate around uh, Roswell, they were okay, but, uh, you know, on a scale of one to 10, I'll give them a six or a seven, you know, maybe, maybe a seven. It'd be a strong six. But uh, this one, and because the governor, as of today, closed the restaurants for in dining, Okay, everything's takeout or eat outside. Um, the restaurants around here close around three o'clock. So by the time we got camp set up, got the Jeep unhooked and went out in town, um, they were closed. The restaurants, a lot of the stores were still open, but the restaurants were closed. This one place was still, they were just getting ready to close and she asked what we wanted and we told her and she says, I can get it for you for takeout. So we bought some souvenirs and waited for the food to get ready. Like I say, I posted a picture, not to make, not to be, you know, but it's takeout. But let me tell you, it was some good New Mexico food. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And unfortunately, tomorrow we'll be in Arizona. But between my sister and my wife, I know I'll be taken care of because they can both cook some good Mexican food. Hey, anyway, uh, having said all of that, folks, uh, I hope you enjoy the pictures. Uh, and, and, you know, Sometimes I'll tell the wife, take a picture of that, take a picture of that, and by the time she gets the phone unlocked, we're already by it. So, you know, she's doing the best she can. Shout out to her. You know, Chrissy, you're doing a good job, baby. Love you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know who rules the roost. <laughs> so, anyway, hey. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, but uh, getting back to some serious note here, you know, in today's scripture, Matthew 23, or 22, 37 through 39, Jesus said unto him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. And, you know, the, of course, the, the, the short version is you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind. And all your soul you know like I say Matthew 22 37 through 39 
and that that harkens back to what's been going on all week long. You know, um, you know, we don't have to agree, and it's okay to agree to disagree, and we can be civil, and we can be loving. That's what Christ told us. You know? Love your neighbor as I loved you. You know, you know, they, they, you know the, the Pharisees asked him, well, what's you know, what's the commandments? And he, you know, he said that you know they're all good, but you know, these two right here wrap up the other eleven in a complete soul okay the, the, the sum is complete with these two you know and uh, you know I say love the Lord thy God with all your heart with all your mind and all your soul all right? and then love your neighbor okay you know as yourself you know uh, some of us think that the world evolves around us okay and if we're loving ourselves that much then we should love the other as much as that. We need to put the other one first. Be the servant. You know, Christ came to serve, not to be served. All right. Hey, folks, you be blessed. Um, tomorrow we'll be coming to you, Lord willing, uh, from somewhere in Arizona. God bless you. Be safe. Bye now.